basically there's a couple there's a couple stuff that we're working on that's all about the like the common theme is delaying the deployment decisions that you have to make until the time that you actually deploy and not having to think of them right away when you first start coding and for people who are new to node as when they first start coding they might not even know that they're going to have to make these decisions so it's, it's particularly problematic um, how many has everybody here deployed node applications I mean has anybody well has anybody here and I'll rephrase the question has anybody here deployed a node application put up your hand I'm hoping to see most hands yeah so whatever okay so um, so, so something so there's a couple ways there's a couple ways of pushing off your deployment decisions so and we we face this when we're writing our modules as in some ways it's e really easy to come up with a, an architecture where you're like oh all you have to do is totally commit to our architecture use our toolkits use our APIs and we'll handle everything for you which is great if you happen to love our architecture and it handles everything for you but especially in Node, and I think in many communities, it's, it's nice if you can kind of pick and choose the techniques you use. Um, and, or maybe if something new and cool comes up, you can add it to your existing application. So we're, uh, one common theme is we're trying to write stuff that you can add to an existing application. Um, but that doesn't, sometimes that works, sometimes that doesn't. So one decision that you're, you know, you're gonna, at some point you're going to have to make when you're deploying your Node application is how many instances of Node are you running and how are you running them. So, I mean, has anybody here used Node Cluster to deploy stuff? A couple people? Work okay for you? The, got Made your applications better? Like you got more performance out of it, I hope. Um, so that's one way. Uh, there's there's a group of people on this earth who are like, you know, I have an eight core machine. If, you're, if Node's not using all cores, it sucks. And that's actually kind of a fair view. Um, so Node Cluster is, is one approach to that. But then there's another group of people who are like, are you guys crazy? Uh, you know, everybody runs their stuff on EC2. You pay by the CPU. Why don't you just, you know, run a, a front end load balancer and, and do it that way? What, what, what's this hardware? Nobody uses hardware. <laughs> so, and that, that's also a fair point of view. Um, so should you, when you first start writing your Express app, have to know about all of these things and all the ways that things are going to be deployed and how your DevOps people are going to, you know, balance the load and get the performance that they want out of your application? It, you'd hope that you don't have to be, like, deep involved in those kind of deployment things as you first start writing your couple lines of code to, you know, implement whatever your API point's going to do. So, I, I tried to write little bits of code that would fit on a slide. So all of my examples are stupid examples that nobody would ever do here. So this is, the, um, in case you ever want to write a bad static file server, I suggest this. Um, so it's just a classic little bit of Node HTTP code. Um, like I said, it's a static file server. You write it, you're serving a file, congratulations, it took you a couple minutes. And now you have to, now you have to deploy it. So I've got a, a little bit of a let's see, a benchmarking utility here. Um, what I'm going to show is that uh, this is not super exciting, but that it's not going to get make um, full CPU usage. Um, are we running? Yeah, okay. No? <laughs> I love demos. And uh, da 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 And a second, hope, oh, yeah. I think I made my um, in my attempt to make the characters big enough that everybody could see everything. I, made, I think I made them too big. Uh, sorry. Okay. So, uh, as demo goes, I mean, basically this shows you that um, I've, got a, I've got Apache benchmark running in the batch background, just like hammering this server with GET requests. And what you can see is that it's, it's popping up to about 50% CPU usage, and it's not going to go any faster. That's about as fast as it can go. But I've got 
more CPU to use. It's like, how, why isn't this thing working? So it's the kind of deployment decision you can make. It's like, okay, you wrote your application. It's, it's running. It's working okay. Mm, but I'm not getting the performance I want out of it. So what can you do? Well, you can rewrite your app to use cluster, clusters, or you can start doing load balancing, or there's lots of things you could do. Um, but again, it's kind of the decision you'd like to leave up to your DevOps people, perhaps, or yourself if you're your DevOps person as you do things later. So strong cluster control is a module uh, I, I, you know, I, I wrote, worked on with a few people. And it allows you to, it basically adds some, a, a bunch of useful features to Node Cluster, such as setting the number of um, workers that you want and keeping them up if they die. Um, you can also resize live. So what I'm going to show you is you can stick, a, so if, what you can, you still have to, you have to use it, you have to write some code to decide that you want to use strong cluster control. And this is kind of the minimal thing. Um, so you can just paste this code right into the top of your existing application. And now it's theoretically cluster clusterable, if that's a word. It's not necessarily clustered, but it can be. So I'm going to kill my, kill my thing. I'm going to run it again and in cluster mode, but with just one, with one worker. And let's see what the and it should hit back to 50% CPU usage because even though it's got a master now and one worker, it's still that one worker is doing all of the work. So you can look at it and be like, oh, okay, cool, 50% CPU usage, one, one node. I mean, can I get better? Can I use all my CPU? I like my CPU. would like to use it all. Um, and what cluster control allows you to do is, is see kind of see live how many, I mean, you could, I mean, of course, you can always kill nodes, start it up again with a different number of workers, kill it, start it up with a different number of workers. This can be annoying. Um, maybe you don't want to kill your entire application. You want to tune it on the fly. So we can pop it up to, to three workers and then go back. I mean, did that help us? So far, no. <laughs> Great. Um, This was working great this morning. Yeah. No, it's not so great. Oh well. Joys of light, Noah. I'm not going to debug this in front of you. In front of you. <laughs> Kind of worst case. I, you can I hope you can take my word for it that if you run more workers, you get more CPU usage because you've got more workers. Um, so the, the theme here is a, a strong cluster control is a, is a tool that helps you delay your decision about how you want to deploy your app till the point where you actually deploy it. You can set some environment variables. Um, you can it, load your configuration from resource files and decide then. Um, Another example of the kind of decisions that you're going to have to make is state sharing. So again, this is truly the, the, the cruddiest example I could think of that might fit on a single slide of a node, a node application where each node application or each node instance needs to share state with the other instance. So real examples are much more interesting. It's uh, you know, keeping presence on a chat application for multiple users. Um, Pooling, pooling socket I/O uh, authorization requests among a number of node workers, but all that takes a little bit more code. So this is a, you know, whatever, a simple example of something that basically for every active T uh, HTTP connection, it you can do a GET request and you can see all of the other, uh, how many active T uh, HTTP requests, um, sorry, sessions there are right now, um, and you you can cluster this. But it won't work because the state's not going to get shared among your various node applications. So th this is an example where there is no magic way to distribute state. I mean, states 
an object, it's being synchronously accessed. You, you get a key, you get its value back. And you, know, you, you actually need to write your code differently in order to take into consideration the fact that state might propagate, that you need to request some state and asynchronously get it back. And while this particular example might look super cruddy, there's like Miroslav, well, refound, a bunch of people have found a really serious problem with um, socket.io wherein there's a race condition. If you, the socket.io makes an HTTP request, gets a key back, starts the, um, the socket.io, sorry, the WebSocket session, and that, there, an authorization key needs to propagate from the one node server to another one. And the way the state's being accessed, you can make Socket.io use Redis, but it does it synchronously. It's like it just grabs, grabs the current state. It doesn't, it doesn't wait. And so basically you get authorized. Your WebSockets get unauthorized. So you run in interesting situations, and you're, all your WebSockets die. It's, it's really horrible. It basically does not work with, with the Redis plugin. Um, so you actually have to, if you're hoping to cluster your node stuff, either, either, even, sorry, using node cluster or just running on multiple EC2 instances or OpenShift or whatever, and you need to share state, you actually have no choice but to, from the beginning, think about how you want to write your code so that it can share state under the assumption that it might later be asynchronous. And that means you have to choose a, a state sharing pattern. Um, so there's lots. Uh, you know, message queues are a classic one. Um, key val if, if your application pattern is more key value, then you're probably going to be using Redis or MongoDB or something. SQL is you know, essentially state sharing, right? You make a, a connection to a SQL database. But you might start off using SQLite, which will let just rock and be super fast, um, but then it's not going to be so fast or work at all when you have multiple Amazon instances. So um, one of the other modules we've worked on is, is strong MQ. And it's, it's just a, a light abstraction around uh, message queue libraries. It's got push-pull queues and topic publish and subscribe queues. But what it offers you is that it, by, it works if you have a single node instance, which probably are just your unit tests, it will actually work. It'll look like it's using a queue, even though everything's in process. If you then use node clustering, it'll use native node me uh, cluster messaging to emulate a, a queue server, but it'll work through the, the cluster master. Um, or you can use external um, queue servers like AMQP, uh, sorry, like ActiveMQ or RabbitMQ. The problem, the problem with it is that you have to from the start, consider you have, you have to start writing your application and consider the fact that you might be clustering later. So you are, you are going to have to write that and later decide. Um, and at deployment, it should be possible to decide what actual queue server you're going to use. You shouldn't have to write your code directly to RabbitMQ or directly to ActiveMQ or directly to nodes cluster queuing. You should be able to decide at deployment time. So StrongMQ is a module that, that helps with that decision. Um, I think I'm going to call it a day at, oop, <laughs> at that. And and the, my, my main point is that there's a theme. I mean, there's a lot of things that Strongloop's working on. We're trying, you know, with mobile backend as a service, making mobile applications and stuff. But one of our common themes that we're coming up with a, a, a lot is how can we give to write tools or modules or enable programming techniques so that if you either have an existing application, you can add deployment time choice to it, or how is it that we can recommend that people start writing their applications so that they at deployment time, the DevOps people will be able to make useful decisions about how it's deployed. Um, that's my, my very brief talk. Thank you.